Good evening. I'm so glad you could join us for our Meet the Artist event for the Blackberry Gift Shops Christmas Marketplace at Pomo Arts. I'm Janice Cotter, Gallery Manager at Pomo Arts, and it feels a little bit like normal to have uh, the Blackberry Gift Shop and Winter Treasures in the gallery at this time of year. Before we start this evening, I'd like to express gratitude to the Pomo Arts Board of Directors, as well as say how thankful we are for the financial support of the Government of Canada, the Province of British Columbia, and the City of Port Moody. I'm especially grateful to the City of Port Moody for letting us use the Kyle Center for our visual arts classes because we wouldn't be able to have the capacity to open the gallery if that wasn't, if the, uh, if we couldn't use that space. So uh, thank you very much to the city, city for supporting the arts. Um, Pomo Arts Gallery is open for in-person visits seven days a week. And we have strict COVID uh, protocols in place, including mandatory masks for visitors and staff. You can check our COVID safety plan at pomoarts.ca, as well as our hours. Tonight, Blackberry Gift Shop members are joining us. Um, they are they are celebrating the 24th anniversary of the Christmas Marketplace. Blackberry Artist Society is run entirely by its members. These artists and artisans volunteer a significant amount of time yearly to, uh, to and energy to help with the general operation of the society and help build upon the exciting opportunities to connect with the local community through their creative practice. Their gift shop is open daily through all the days that Pomo Arts is open. Um, in this show, there are 17 artists uh, with artwork in the gift shop and the Ann Kitchen Gallery as well as their ever popular Christmas tree that's overflowing with beautiful handmade ornaments. I'm delighted to have some of the artists here with us tonight. You'll meet them as we scroll through and see samples of their artwork, but to see it all, you'll need to visit the gallery. Once again, I'm going to ask the artists who are here with us to introduce themselves and to share something about their artwork. And anyone who is interested um, can post questions in Facebook and uh, we'll try and have the artists answer them as we go along. So here we go, we'll have a start. Any of the artists that aren't here, um, I will um, tell you a little bit about them. This is a gallery installation shot in the and Kitchen Gallery of the current show. So our first artist is Vicki Alicia, and Vicki's not here with us this evening. I'm going to read the bio that I was given. And she says that her art happens when I fall in love with an idea, especially from my cabin on Indian Arm just outside Port Moody. Training at Cal State University, Long Beach, Shad Bolt Center and Emily Carr has enhanced my artistic journey. I've lived in Port Moody for 35 years, where a studio built by my husband houses me, my art, and my rescued greyhound. And she has shown an example of three of her paintings. Vicky's been a longtime member with Blackberry and was the first executive director at Port Moody Art Center uh, when it opened in 1998. So we have several of uh, Vicky's paintings here and they're beautiful. The photos just do not do them justice. Our next artist is Yolanda Chung and Yolanda does paper cutting and folding. Yolanda's major area of study in university was three-dimensional design. Originally from Hong Kong, Yolanda has embraced her home her home country's paper cutting and folding trends tradition and brings her 3D experience into her two-dimensional creations. Her art requires intense concentration and attention to detail. 
Yolanda makes a variety of pieces ranging from framed works to greeting and fabric cards and other decorations. Um, for the digital gallery this evening, she's included some uh, framed works that are available in the gift shop. Her uh, panda and um, her framed uh, piece called Elegance. And moving on, we have Linda Chow, who uh, does jewelry for the Blackberry Artist Society. Linda creates her jewelry pieces by hand in her New West home studio. Linda works primarily with 93.5 Argentinium silver and uh, 14 karat gold, gold fill and copper using traditional metalworking techniques that create many interesting textures. Linda's one of a kind jewelry pieces include uh, rings, earrings, pendants, and bangles, some with natural elements and man-made man crystal accents. These are her Christmas tree earrings. And she also has beautiful uh, pendants and necklaces. Uh, this one um, is sterling silver and uh, comes on an 18 inch silver chain. Uh, we've also included uh, information about each piece with prices, and you can phone um, the Blackberry Gift Shop to ask about the pieces, or you can come down in person and visit the, um, visit the gallery and uh, have a look-see. Our next artist is Beth David. Now, I know Beth is here this evening. So Beth, I'd like to invite you to come forward and tell us a little bit about your work. I know you are a painter and you also work in encaustics. Um, are you able to come forward, Beth? Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll probably have to unmute. Okay. I'm Okay, Beth was here earlier. Let's see if she's still here. Um, oh, darn. I don't see her name here. So uh, I'll read a little bit about Beth. And if she joins us in a few minutes, then um, I know she was here earlier, but some people have been having problems with uh, Wi-Fi this evening. So um, if Beth joins us again in a few minutes, then she'll be able to have an opportunity to chat with us again. Beth grew up in Petawawa and spent her time between the Ottawa River and Algonquin Park. As a child spending time with her grandfather, she learned to identify trees, plants, and animals, which nurtured her love of all things outdoors in the bush. She moved to BC 37 plus years ago and works in acrylics, oil, encaustic, and watercolors. And you can see some of her beautiful winter pieces. The nice thing about the digital gallery is even when it looks like a small image, you can um, click on it to get an idea of, uh, get more detail and see the textures on the pieces. So this is uh, Beth's piece, The Path Home. And uh, she also, this is one of her encaustic pieces, beautiful pond, a 12 by 14 piece. And here is a panorama of the uh, gallery going all the way across to show some of the fiber work um, throughout on this side, more fiber here. Um, there's the, the Blackberry artists have such a diverse group of members working, you know, at incredible work. Our next artist is Violet Finvers, and I know Violet is here. Violet, would you like to come Hello. forward and tell us a bit about your fused glass? Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? I can hear you. It's all yours. Okay. Hi, everyone. I am Violet, as Janice mentioned. Um, I am the fused glass artist in the shop. Uh, I've been with Blackberry for about four years, and so this is my fourth 
Christmas marketplace and it's so exciting to actually have it go forward because there's so few places people actually go and shop these days. It's very exciting. Um, so I have a range of work in the shop. Some of it's functional. So I do platters and bowls and things like that. But I also have some sculptural pieces. And then I do um, jewelry, which combines a glass element with sterling silver. Um, I started doing jewelry just because I have so many little pieces of really interesting glass that it made perfect sense to combine it with something that can be worn and be really special that way. Um, all my stuff is done in a kiln. It's not, it's a different than blown glass where you need a big furnace and everything. So I work out of my house in my garage and keeps the garage really warm in the winter, which my husband loves. Um, and each piece starts out as a sheet of colored or clear glass. And I cut that up and break it up and fuse it together and then put it back in the kiln in a mold and finish it in different ways and sandblast, add textures with sandblasting. Um, depending on what I'm doing. So there's lots of steps involved and lots of tools and things which I love doing. Um, my aesthetic is pretty contemporary and kind of bold and wow. colorful. And the reason for that, I think, is because I have been a graphic designer for about, well, I hate to say it, 30 years. Um, so I can't help but have that sort of come through in my work, which I guess maybe sets it apart. It's, it's very structured in a way, I guess. And you know, I don't know what, how it is, you know, it's my, it's my graphic design training that comes through. I love combining textures and colors and patterns and um, just experimenting with different techniques and to see what happens. So never a dull moment. I love what I'm doing and I'm really grateful to be part of the gift shop and part of the art center. And thank you to Janice for putting all this together for us. I think that's about it. Come by and see us whenever you're around and meet one of the artists and because we're always there, one of us, two of us these days. So it'd be great to have you come by. Thanks. Thanks, Violet. Um, we're going to move on to our next artist, Lucy. And Lucy, I'm afraid I'm going to mispronounce your name. I should have got a pronouncer before we started. I know you're here, so I'll get you to come on and say it. Hi, it's Jimenez. Lucy Jimenez. Jimenez? Yes. Oh, great. Thank you. Now you can <laughs> tell us a bit about... Pardon me? It's not as hard as it looks. No, I just didn't want to make a mistake. <laughs> um, no I'll get you to tell us a bit about your work and how long you've been with Blackberry. Sure. Uh, I've been with Blackberry since 2011, so nine years going on. And uh, at first I started working with beads as a hobby and I just, I'm um, self-taught artist. I try to figure out techniques, learn techniques and try to use them. Uh, I love to work with beads as the, the earring that you're seeing here, uh, mostly using three-dimensional forms, just build up something with a very tiny pieces of glass beads. Um, there are some other works that you have that the, the necklace, the blue necklace that you have there, Janice, it's a very versatile necklace. Uh, I found other four different ways of wearing that that it is shown in the shop uh, by the necklace. Uh, that one, I like to make jewelry that you can wear in different occasions, different ways, different lengths, all these things. So this one, you can detach the beaded feathers at the ending and wear that without it, like as it shows in one of the drawings here to the right, or with a nice knotted center that you can wear that way too, or many different ways that you can figure out. Uh, this is, there are very uh, many different beading techniques that I use. Uh, the one of this blue necklace is, um, uh, is bead crochet. Uh, the other necklace that you have the pendant, the green and, and silver pendant there, it's another technique of uh, beading using three-dimensional work also, kind of a twisted, but I call it a twisted peyote pendant. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I also make jewelry, not just with beads, but I like working with chain mail, like the examples that I have here that you can see in the shop. Then when I work with uh, sterling silver, little rings that I add up one at a time <laughs> and make the chains or some other, or other necklaces that I have around here too. Uh, but please come to the gift shop, see what we have for the Christmas marketplace and you see many different works there. Okay. Thank you, Lucy. Um, I love that the artists are able to share the stories behind their work, as well as their experiences being a BlackBerry member. Um, some of these artists have been with BlackBerry for a very long time, and their work is being so popular in the uh, community. So it's always changing. What I've found is already some of the things that I've uploaded on this digital gallery have already sold on me. I would like to introduce our next artist or call forward our next artist, Cynthia Head, um, who works in contemporary baskets and batik. Cynthia, do you want to come up uh, ahead and tell us a little bit about your work? Yes. Hi. Hi. I'm, hi. I'm Cynthia Head. I'm new to the group this year, and uh, it's been an honor. It's been uh, really special to meet the wonderful people that are in this in this group and I've enjoyed it immensely. Um, a little bit about the baskets. They are coiled with uh, yellow longleaf pine needles and the pine needles can be as long as 18 inches. Um, they come for only from the southern eastern area of the United States. And I don't know if you can see this, but I have some needles here. And they're as long as your outstretched arm. Uh, and that's what's used to, to coil these baskets. Other materials that people have used and are using still today um, are uh, stripped yucca leaves. Um, sweet grass and other pine needles. Um, I understand the ponderosa pine is also used. Sometimes you can find those needles that are long enough to be functional. The, um, the art of, of coiling goes back to the beginning of civilizations and um, wonderfully, uh, every civilization has used this technique. And I think that's one of the reasons why I have taken to it so thoroughly. I'm a historian by education. I'm a high school history teacher. And uh, that's my background in my education. And uh, I, I just get a real bang out of sitting and, and getting into the Zen of coiling these baskets and thinking about maybe how ancient women thousands of years ago did exactly the same thing. They, they used local materials that don't disintegrate quickly and um, made baskets probably in the same manner that I have. Um, I use different centers for the baskets. I have one here that is uh, a group of seashells uh, that I, I resined, uh, collected the seashells and then put them in groupings and resined them. And then they're glued to the back of a piece of leather. The beads are glass beads. Sometimes they're stone beads that uh, I have found in various places. Here's another one. And this is a stone with some really cool stone beads that kind of go with it. I also take every opportunity to, to get hold of fossils and use those as centers. Um, they take a long time. The baskets take anywhere from 40 to 50 hours for, for a medium to a large basket. Um, they also require about 1,000 to 4,000 needles. So I'm constantly feeding the hungry coil as I go around and stitch. Uh, 
I don't have one handy <laughs> to show. Anyway, uh, that's the story of baskets. Thank you. Um, and there's also a sample of uh, one of um, Cindy's uh, batiks. Now, if you want to come and visit the gallery quite often, when, when Cindy's here, she always has a coil in her hand and is in process making a basket. So you can <laughs> always ask her questions about the process. Thanks so much, Cindy. You're welcome. Our next artist is Beryl Hickenbottom. And Beryl does weaving. And Beryl, would you like to come forward and tell us a bit about your weaving and a bit about um, how long you've been with Blackberry? Yes, I would. <laughs> I think I've been with the Blackberry since 1996, um, which is probably just after it opened. Anyway, it was, it's been quite interesting and I've really enjoyed all these years meeting so many people. And um, my passion is weaving. I love collecting fibers and I like to mix different fibers together. And I love to color. I love the um, interaction of the color. Um, and so um, I make scarves and table runners. I make baby blankets, and I used to make a lot of garments, not so many garments now, but um, anyway, I, any, anything I, I always find something I want to do that's new. And um, I have two looms, the floor looms, and um, so uh, you can do different patterns and different textures. Um, this, is, this one is a ruana, and it's, um, it's like two shawls that are joined at the back. It's um, a South American poncho, really. Anyway, um, this one, it's all wool. It's 100% wool. And um, there's some hand spun yarn here. I can spin and I used to spin, but I find it takes such a lot of time that I now buy my yarn from spinners who can do the job much better than I can. And um, anyway, uh, it's so interesting to see how the different fibers, when you put them together and how they come about once you start weaving. And you can do so many different patterns de depending on the way you thread the loom. Um, these are tea towels and this is called a summer and winter weave. I mean, you can buy books with patterns that are, um, some of them are very old patterns, um, especially the um, overshot patterns that were used in the coverlets years ago, but, um, but then you can adapt them to yourself, to use them whichever way you like. And as I say, I, I love to use the, col the colors, lots of color. Um, I am, otherwise, I um, oh, sorry. I was just gonna say, I understand those tea towels will last forever pretty much. Oh yes, they're, they're cotton and linen. And so you can just throw them in the washing machine and they'll, they will last a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, and do you wanna tell us a little bit about the, um, the oh. piece here? Oh, the this one is, is called, uh, it's called a boa. Yeah, it's, it's just a narrow scarf. And um, I, a lot of the yarns that I have, you know, I finish up with some beautiful yarns, but not enough to really do much with. So I used to, I can use them up making these small um, boas, which are kind of a fun thing to wear in, uh, in different colors and all the bits of ribbon and fancy yarns that I have left get put into these. Thank you, um, Beryl. Oh, did you have yeah, something else to say? Sorry. No, I think that's about it, unless anyone has any questions. Um, I don't have any yet, but um, I'll let you know if we have any that come up. But um, Beryl is here fairly often as well. And uh, if you have any questions about weaving or the, the things that she makes, she's always a available to answer questions or leave a question and um, the members who are here can pass it on to her to find out for what you were interested in. Thanks so much, Beryl. 
Um, we will move on to our next artist, Angela Holbrook. Angela is a fabric artist and she is here and able to chat with us. Angela? Hello everyone. I'm Angela and uh, I've been sewing for pro probably all of my life, but only just started making bags about six years ago and became a member of the Blackberry at that time. Although I'd been hanging around Blackberry for a good 15 years prior to that as well. The turquoise uh, purse that you do you see on the screen right now is made out of cork. And this cork is uh, made from the oak tree in Portugal and it's harvested from the bark of the cork tree. And this makes the tree a renewable resource and uh, it's, it wears very, very well. Uh, it can be dyed, and this one has been dyed turquoise. I have another bag very similar that's made out of red cork. And uh, then I have bags which are just made out of cotton or linen or canvas and uh, they range from small little gift bags, as you see on your screen, all the way up to a tote bag. And uh, I enjoy making them and just tell me what you want and I can make something for you. Be happy to. Oh. Sorry, Angela, you were cutting out a little bit. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your uh, Baker Street bag and your crossbody bag? Oh, you're muted. Could you unmute? I muted because I had, the computer had frozen. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, do you want to tell us a bit about your bags? I know that they are always in demand. Your, your purses? Oh. You've got your Baker Street bag up and on the screen? Yes, the uh, Baker Street bag is, uh, is made out of uh, fabric that you could uh, use for outdoors or whatever um, from the uh, And it's uh, very wearable. It has uh, vinyl panels on the side and vinyl handle as well. Okay. And there is the uh, purple one and it shows and a beautiful pattern lining. This one is a bag made out of cotton with a cotton interior. It has zippers, zippered pockets and uh, is usable every day. Thank you very much. And now I know that um, Angela also does a lot of custom orders. And I've, I've had uh, people come into the gallery who've had one of her bags and they want her, it's, it's uh, something they'll say, well, I want the exact same thing, but in a different fabric. <laughs> they love them so much. Anyway, um, uh, at this point, I'm looking at our, our uh, messages in the um, Facebook, and I wanted to give a shout out to our board president, Kathy Chenna, who's joined us and watching. Um, it's uh, great to see Kathy here. And uh, it's always nice when we have our, our board members are able to join us and support. That's great. Um, I'm going to go to our next artist, who is the president of the Blackberry Artist Society, uh, Del Holbrook, and he does wood carving and intarsia. And I'm going to pass it over to Del to tell you a bit about his work. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone, and Merry Christmas. Uh, the gift shop and the Christmas marketplace are a great place to find those special gifts you need for special people. Now, the particular one you're looking at now is a wristwatch. In fact, it's made out of wood. It's about three inches wide. And if you stretch it out with the straps top to bottom, it's about 14 inches long. So it's a neat gift. It can sit very nicely on your desk. 
And obviously then you'll have the time of day at any time. And if you're really going out on a special occasion, you might wanna put it on your wrist just to show everybody else you have one of those. Next item, Jen. It, it's up there, Dad. Del. Oh, this is the special one through the gift shop. These are called the comfort birds. They're made out of exotic woods and local woods. And with each of those, you can set them in your hand, you can rub them uh, gently, and they will always be a reminder that someone around somewhere really does care about you. And they're all unique, they're all different. There's no two exactly the same. So you will have a very unique gift to give to someone else, or even sometimes keep for yourself. Third item. Yes, it's up. This is one of my favorite things to do, especially around Christmas time, angels. This is one of the ones that I had in the shop. It is already sold. I've got another one in the shop that's very similar to that, but not identical. Obviously, when you're working with wood, you never get something that's identical. They're always slightly different. And these are just three examples. I do a lot of intarsia stuff, which is a picture generated using the color, the texture, and the smoothness of the wood such that it can easily represent a real picture. In fact, I've got an extra one here that I can show you. Just took it off the wall, it's sitting there. This is a rose using aromatic cedar and poplar as the woods. So you can see it's three-dimensional and it's very attractive when you hang it on your wall it's a conversation piece as well. So if you're looking for something special made out of wood, I do the intarsia, I do the very special birds, the comfort birds, and at Christmas time for the kids, I bring in wooden toys. The uh, Ann Kitchen Gallery has several of those in there. So for your special little one, there's also gifts around the gift shop for them. Thank you, Del. Um, I have to say your helicopter is one of my go-to baby gifts. <laughs> so um, it's always, and I noticed you had them back this year. Yes, there's one in there. And uh, when the youngster pulls it along, the rotor on the top rotates and keeps their attention. <laughs> They're really nice. And I know your um, log, uh, your log, trucks yeah uh, oh my gosh the the trucks that carry logs <laughs> are a, truck, those yeah. are always popular my goodness I, my brain just went blank there <laughs> oh, well welcome to my world <laughs> um del does a lot of different types of wood things and the comfort birds are also one of my favorites so thank you very much del our uh, another gallery shot and our next artist is Lori Jones Canta. Lori, do you wanna come forward and tell us a bit um, about your art practice, the work you do and uh, how long you've been at, at um, Blackberry Gift Shop? Hi Janice, thank you for hosting tonight's event. Can you hear me okay? I can. Oh, great. Um, I joined Blackberry Gift Shop. They gladly took me in about, I think this is my third marketplace, uh, but I was part of it in around 96, 97. I met Beryl and Vicki Alicia and a few people, uh, but I left to raise kids and now I'm retired. So I came across carving uh, by an encounter. I was walking uh, Como Lake and there was a fellow sitting at a picnic table on a sunny day carving a lighthouse and I walked up out of curiosity and he told me I could easily learn and uh, I was going to dismiss him but he said uh, you could just come by Dogwood Centre and so I became part of a group of carvers in Coquitlam four years ago. And I haven't stopped. I, 
find it fascinating. The wood talks to me uh, to what kind of shape it's going to be. Uh, I've never cut myself, which is really good because no one gives me sharp knives in the kitchen. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, this year I was having a lot of fun with miniatures for the ornaments and they've been really popular. And I did some little gnomes. I've got one here. I don't know if you can see it very well. His little nose and beard and hat. Um, and uh, this is a Harry Potter's Hogwarts Express that's up. It was a piece of wood that people were going to throw out. And I rescued it. Uh, it had a few cracks and splinters and people gave up and uh, it talked to me. It already had holes in it, which I made into tunnels. And my son was reading the Harry Potter series and had gone back to all the films and it got me interested in revisiting those images and that imagination of J.K. Rowling. I love to take my ideas from literature. Um, so this is uh, wood and acrylics. Oh, that's Sorry. okay. <laughs> um, this is, I had some requests for children's nightlights uh, in my carving. I had done a few. So this is one that I created just for Christmas. Of course, it's um, the North Pole toy shop. Uh, it's, I've added the miniature sleigh because I am a member of the BC Miniatures Society. Uh, I love dollhouses and miniatures, so it's easy to go there. Um, it's got an added LED lantern. The rest is carved, though, and then acrylics. Got a little mailbox, and um, it lights up. So uh, I put it on recycled wood, which is a lot of what I use. And this was fun to create. Hopefully someone will want it. <laughs> Um, and this is part of the Harry Potter inspiration. It's um, Hogwarts Tower, the wizard school. I just, uh, it's a takeoff from pictures I saw online. So it's not a replica, of course. I would never take license to that. But uh, the towers and the spires, I love. My old business used to be called Jester Gift Ideas. And so I love castles and jesters and wizards. So this was an easy way to go. It's actually three different pieces of bark. The main one in the middle and two on the outside are separate. And the, again, it's on recycled wood. It's all been wood burned. I use pyrography as well to draw out. It would be like outlining a drawing with black pen. When I burn, it gives the same effect. And then it's acrylic paint and flags and the poles are uh, skewers, barbecue skewers. <laughs> anyway, it also lights up. It's got 50 LED lights um, that are fun to program. And it's in the Blackberry gift shop in the Ann Kitchen Gallery if you want to see it in person. And it is the centerpiece of the room. It looks yeah. lovely in there. <laughs> well, when you walk in, it's the first thing you see. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that story about the carve, learning to carve, Lori. Thank you. Our next artist is Potter Nan Kashla. And Nan isn't with us tonight. But her pottery, it, uh, she's a longtime pottery, and her body of work reflects the many influences she's had over the years in a studio in uh, North Vancouver. She makes mostly functional artworks that are intended for daily use in the kitchen and home. Her work is both wheel thrown and hand built using uh, various clays. She loves making pottery. It's a constant source of joy and amusement every day in the studio. Every day in the studio makes her grateful for the people who have helped her make her, helped to make her dream a reality and for her good fortune to have discovered something she is passionate about. And um, her, she has beautiful glazes on her work and her designs are very creative. I love Nan's work. 
uh, you'll have to pop in to see it. She's replacing things quite often as they do sell quickly. And our next artist is with us tonight, and it's Jane Austenstad. And Jane does uh, silk painting and belting. And just before she comes on to uh, say a word, I just have to tell you, she's done the cutest little felted uh, sheep heads. It's a little round sheep head and they're wearing a mask. So it's, they're so cute. Anyway, Jane, do you want to come and say a bit about your work? Oh, she was here. Let me see. Are you, uh, let's see, Jane is here. Um, it's showing that she doesn't have her camera on or sound. Hmm. Okay, sorry, Jane. Um, I'm not sure why your camera's not on and I'm not sure why it's not even showing you have a microphone, uh, don't have a microphone. Oh, you're, were you on the iPad? as well. Okay. Sorry, Jane, I'm going to um, read about your work. And um, please join us. We'll, um, we can always come back to you at the end when we go to the gallery view of all the artists. Um, Jane finds inspiration for her designs in the beauty of nature, wildlife, colors, shapes, and seasons. Her artistic practice has developed from traditional watercolor painting to her present day pursuit of hand painting on silk and more recently needle felting. Jane creates one of a kind designs in wearable and functional art formats. And uh, the piece you see on the left is one of her hand painted silk scarves. And she also has these absolutely delightful felted bowls in uh, beautiful colors. You really need to see them to uh, appreciate them. She also does hats and not very many artists are doing hats anymore. So uh, you can pop in the gallery and uh, see uh, all the different styles of hats that she has, as well as her other felted on silk items. We will move on to our next artist, Wendy Schmidt, who is a painter. Um, Wendy's not able to join us this evening. I know she's been with Blackberry for quite a long time and also participated in exhibitions, uh, several exhibitions at the Art Center, at Port Moody Art Center in the gallery. Wendy paints wildlife, flora, and fauna in its natural habitat, capturing a peaceful feeling, a calmness of colors, inspired by viewing wildlife and nature walks. Wendy is also, also likes to work um, from her own photography, there's, uh, there's lots to create and explore at, at my home on the west coast of BC. And this is her golden eagle in oil. And she also has, uh, she does mostly uh, watercolors and has, I believe, watercolors and oils mostly. Um, this is a grizzly in oil. And a kingfisher in oil. Our next artist is Elizabeth Wallace. And Elizabeth is also a longtime member of the, uh, of the Blackberry Artist Society. And uh, her, she's a painter. Elizabeth takes inspiration from BC's visual treasures, rock faces and sunlit gardens, weathered buildings and landscapes. She chooses a painting form and medium that will interpret her feeling for the subject. Many of Elizabeth's watercolors begin with a random pouring or underpainting, allowing the resultant values and melted colors to suggest shape and subject. She has developed her own style through research and experimentation. 
and this vibrant piece um, beside her biography is called Russet Garden. And it's a 30 by 24 acrylic painting. She also likes to have fun in her work. And this lovely gentleman is Ch Chanticleer. I think I might have pronounced that wrong. And it's a watercolor. And her tulips, shades of spring. I think in a little, by January, we will all be able to appreciate this. We're supposed to have a lot of snow in January this year. <laughs> uh, Wendy Wallace is uh, uh, also a potter that is with Blackberry Artist Society. And Wendy isn't here this evening. Uh, she has been creating vessels from pottery for more than 20 years. She both hand, oh, pardon me, she both hand builds and throws functional pottery using a porcelainous clay so that her glaze colors are bright. Many of her pieces are adorned with dragonflies or starfish. This and her glaze techniques are used to represent the West Coast. All of the pottery is microwave and dishwasher and oven safe. This is a uh, 13 by eight all oval platter that would also work as a charcuterie board or a serving platter. Um, she also does a lot of trays. She has quite a wide variety of styles and items that she uh, creates in her work. Now this, I believe, is new. She's done a birdhouse with a uh, pottery door, a pottery applique on the door. I think she only started doing those last year, so it's nice to see them. Um, you'll have to come by the gallery to see more of her work. Now, our last artist is Allison White, and Allison is here, so I'm hoping she'll join us and tell us, a, give us a few words uh, about her work and being in Blackberry. Uh, oh, let's see. Let me have a look. I know she was here earlier. Oh, she is here. She just needs to unmute. You have to unmute your uh, computer, Allison. Oh, there's, oh, I think I just muted you. Sorry, I, mute, I, I muted you by accident when you unmuted. You'll have to unmute again. So, unmute sorry it. about that. that Janice, uh, we all have to thank you so much for putting this on for Blackberry. And I want to echo Cindy's uh, earlier words of, how fortunate our group is to have met each other and to be working with each other. And for those who came before us and set up everything in the Blackberry gift shop. Um, I'm an on player art, on play, on plein air artist, and I paint mainly outside and I take my canvas um, in my bicycle often, in my bicycle basket or I take large pieces down to the beach and I paint um, right there on the beach or on the dike or wherever I see a spot that I like to paint. Port Moody has many beautiful spots. Uh, and as you can see up in behind me, um, the uh, Pigeon Cove always le lends to a painting and the, and the trees at Colony Farm. Uh, the beauty of on player on plain air painting is that the light is so dramatic and you can adapt your colors and the changing light the changing atmosphere it just makes for a very exciting time painting um please come down to the gift shop and see all our beautiful work um not just mine well i shouldn't say mine's beautiful but all the work we have down there. And thank you again, Janice, for letting us participate in this event. Thank you. Thank you, Al Allison. Now, Allison, you're not only a member of the Blackberry Artists Society, you are also involved in quite a few other art groups. Um, did you want to oh, mention? 
yes, the Port Moody Art Association has been under a bit of uh, distress this year because we could not meet. But we do have um, um, the Facebook access for our artwork, which replaces our art show that we would have had a month ago. So um, you can see all the members' works on Facebook. I've been a member of Fort Moody Art Association for 36 years, and I've actually lived in Fort Moody for 50 three years. So I really know Port Moody and I was actually one of the founding members for the Port Moody um, Art uh, Center back when Vicky was uh, our uh, executive director. So I do um, back a long way with the Port Moody Center, Port Moody um, Art Association and um, other groups um, in our uh, community. Thank Thanks, you, Jen. Alison. Um, I'm just looking at your the last painting of yours in the digital gallery, and it's that incredible view of the Port Moody Inlet Boardwalk, and uh, that's always uh, something. That's a view that people absolutely love. We've already sold something here in the in the Winter Treasures show that is a different view of that of that was painted in watercolors. But I love your acrylic painting of this one. So thank you. Yes, thank you, Janice. Um, this is another gallery view again of, of the actual gallery, not the gift shop. So it's kind of nice you can get an idea of some of the, the uh, pieces that are in here. I'm going to stop sharing the screen now and uh, let you have a look at the artists that are participating. Um, oh, we've lost, oh, here, everybody's here. <laughs> I should have given them more warning because uh, they were probably looking at things. And I have to say that um, Del, each day, uh, the Blackberry artists volunteer in the gift shop and in the end kitchen gallery so that when you are coming to look at artwork, you have actual, the actual people who are making the work are there to uh, help you and talk to you about it. And this evening it's Angela and Dell are the volunteers for the evening. And um, Dell is in the gallery that I was showing you screenshots of and Angela is in their year round gift shop. So um, I, just wanted to let uh, the artists know that there's a few comments. People are commenting on some of the artwork and uh, Rose Cap said she could see a, a, a little cat wanting to curl up in one of Jane's felted bowls. So that would be uh, really nice. Um, does anybody want to uh, say a few words uh, while we're here? We've got a couple more minutes. Okay, everybody's shy. Dell? <laughs> oh, I think he's frozen. Okay. Well, if nobody wants to say I think, any, oh. can I can I just say, Janice, yeah. I would just like to thank uh, Violet and Anna and Dell, all the members who helped put the show together for Blackberry Gift Shop. They did a great job, and I was glad to, that I could help a little bit. So thank you, all of you. Um, I, I, that's a, a really good point to make because it is a big show to put together. And I know that each year um, you have a committee assigned to do various tasks from organizing the artists and the artwork drop off and installing it. And it's a really huge job. So um, it, uh, it's really nice that you did say that, you know, that you thanked the whole team. Not everybody is able to be here uh, for this. Um, Del, if you're able to, did you want to say a few words? Oh, he's just zipped away from the camera. So the problem with being the volunteers for the evening is that uh, they also are helping people 
while while we're doing this live Zoom, they're in their galleries and I'm in my office, but I can see out into the gallery. Oh, here comes Dell and he's going to unmute and say a few words. Oh. There we are. You should be able to hear me now. I can hear you now. Go I ahead, Dell. That's necessarily a blessing. Okay, thank you, Janice, very much for putting this together for us. Thank all the artists that came along on this Zoom trip with us. And uh, I'm sure the people in Port Moody and surrounding areas will be thrilled to stop in and see what exciting things we have for them and for their special people in their life. And again, we also have a Christmas tree with ornaments on it. And that's a special spot for everybody to stop, especially the little ones. They always love to find their own little special ornament that they can take home and give to mom or dad. So there's something for everybody when you visit the Blackberry gift shop in the shop itself and in the end kitchen gallery as well. So thanks everybody. Thanks Janice and have a great Christmas everybody. I'm going to ask the artists to stay on with me for a minute longer, and I'm going to say goodbye to the people that have joined us this evening and to thank you for coming to another one of our virtual artist events. And uh, we will be back in January with our January exhibition. So thank you very much for coming. <laughs>